Fort Raleigh National Historic Site, North Carolina. More than 400 years ago, this was the site of a colony called Roanoke, the first English settlement in North America. Roanoke is known as the Lost Colony because it was mysteriously abandoned in 1590, and the colonists vanished without a trace. The Lost Colony remains this mystery that's at the very heart of the origin of our nation. People remain fascinated by Roanoke because we know so little about the place. We know what happened at Jamestown. We know what happened at Plymouth. But Roanoke is this mystery because we don't know what happened. When we think about the founding of the United States of America, we think of it in this fairly linear way that colonists showed up, they settled, they moved west, America. And really, it turns out that there were a number of false starts in how this country got started. And one of those was the colony at Roanoke. This was a group of people who showed up and were ready to settle. But what happened to that colony is one of the big unanswered questions of American history. What happened to the Roanoke colonists? Perhaps the answer can be found by examining the events in the late 16th century that led to their fateful disappearance. In the 1580s, England was a very small, poor, struggling island that really wanted to get in on the game of colonizing the Americas, because that's where the money was. The English were looking at the Spanish ships coming back laden with gold and various commodities from their empire, if you like, in Mexico, South America, Florida. And of course, that was making the Spanish very powerful. Essentially, it was a case of if we don't find our own source of wealth in this new world, we could be sort of overrun by our enemies. In 1587, an English map maker named John White was commissioned to found a new colony on Roanoke Island, which had been claimed by a British expedition to the New World two years earlier. After an arduous two-month voyage across the Atlantic Ocean, White and 117 colonists landed on Roanoke Island. The people who chose to come along on this ill-fated expedition were middle-class people from London. So they were eager to find new lands because to have land in England meant everything. That's what gave you status. But they knew they needed more supplies and more colonists in order to succeed, in order to thrive. So John White decided to return to England in order to get those needed supplies and colonists. On August 25th, 1587, only three months after first arriving on Roanoke, John White set sail for England. He planned to return with aid in less than six months. But a series of conflicts with the Spanish Navy would delay White's return mission for three long years. In August of 1590, John White returns to Roanoke Island. They anchor offshore. And when they arrive, it's dark and it's too late for them to go ashore. But John White is happy because he sees a fire in the distance and he assumes that the settlers are there waiting for him. Maybe even have seen his ship and have lit a bonfire in order to guide him in. The next morning, White came ashore expecting to find the colonists there to welcome him back. But to his surprise, there was no sign of them. The entire settlement was completely abandoned. John White gets back to Roanoke, but there's no sign of anyone. And he finds all the houses have been taken down. And in their place is a very, very well-built, defensible fort. So a little bit of a mystery, you've got this new fort that wasn't there in 1587 when he last saw them, and the place is deserted. Where have they gone? Eventually, John White came across a cryptic clue as to the whereabouts of the colonists. He found the word Croatoan, mysteriously carved into a wooden post. John White told the colonists when he left in 1587 that if they were to abandon the settlement, that they should leave a secret token, as he called it, behind, so that he would know where to find them. And this seemed to be the answer. Here was Croatoan carved onto the post. Croatoan was what we call Hatteras today, an island about 50 miles to the south. 
It's also the name of the tribe of Native Americans who lived on the island. But when John White prepared to set sail to search for the colonists, a storm blew in and damaged his ship. And he was forced to return to England. Unfortunately, John White was never able to return to the New World to search for the lost colonists. But in recent years, archaeologists have carried out extensive excavations to try and solve this 400-year-old mystery. Archaeologists have been digging on Hatteras, what was called Croatoan, and they have come up with some remarkable evidence. The first most important piece of evidence found was a gold ring that was made in Elizabethan times. This was big news because it seemed to indicate the possibility that at least one of the colonists had been on Croatoan Island. And then another competing team was digging on Hatteras Island. And what they found was really intriguing. They actually discovered the hilt of an Elizabethan era sword that was found in a Native American village. Now, whether or not this is something that belonged to a lost colonist remains to be seen. It's possible some did survive long enough to have a family and that there would have been assimilation with the Croatoans. And yet, considering how much archaeology that's been done, we have no skeletons. Where are they? That is a mystery. If we had found dead bodies scattered or obvious signs of a siege or an attack, that would be the answer that we need. We get this word, Croatoan. But did people actually make it there? Where did they go? What happened to this group of settlers? It's the ambiguity that really keeps this legend alive. It's hard to imagine that an entire colony that was home to over 100 people could just vanish into thin air. Did the colonists at Roanoke simply decide to move somewhere else? Or was there a darker reason behind their disappearance?